Amazon makes a best-selling list for each of their products and updates them frequently. I was browsing the best sellers in computer processors last week and I noticed an interesting trend. Out of the top five CPUs that are listed, only one of those slots is occupied by Intel. That's a shame. That's a shame. Now, if you're in the market for a new CPU, you might be asking yourself a couple questions. Like, what makes these Ryzen processors so special? And of these processors, what's the difference between them besides the price? And more importantly, which one should you be going with? Let's talk about it. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny. Welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. I'm going to start off with the most important facts at the beginning of the video. That way, if you decide to click off and go do something else, at least I've helped you in some way. There are a few major differences that you need to know with these best sellers when shopping. I'll start with the obvious. Now, I'm not going to outline the differences between AMD versus Intel. That's a topic for another video. Today is just about the top five CPUs on Amazon right now and which one makes sense for most buyers. Intel's i9-13900K is a completely different platform. So if you're going to be buying an Intel-based CPU, buy an Intel-based motherboard. Something like the ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi would go great with that CPU. Also, the 13900K is basically Intel's flagship CPU, and it costs almost $600. You've been warned. But if you're balling and you want to pick up that combo, I'll leave it in the description below for you to go take a look at. This leaves the AMD-based processors occupying the rest of the list. Now there is one major difference between the newly released Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and the other three CPUs. The difference is the platform you'll need to support the processor that you buy. The 7800X 3D, like I said, is a brand new processor and it's supported by AMD's AM5 motherboards. This is the 600 series chipset for clarity. Things like the B650 or X670 are what you'll wanna look for. The other three CPUs, which are the Ryzen 5 5600X, Ryzen 7 5700X and Ryzen 7 5800X 3D are based on AMD's AM4 platform, which are 500 series. Look for boards like B550 or X570. These motherboards and processors are not interchangeable, so you'll need to get the board that matches the CPU that you want. Once again, I'll have CPU and motherboard pairings down below in the description for you to go check out. They're affiliate links, but they don't cost you anything extra and they help keep the channel going, so I'd appreciate the assist. Lastly, Ryzen 7000 requires DDR5 RAM, while Ryzen 5000 runs on DDR4. So if you go for something like the 5600X in the number one slot right now, you can pair it with some cheap DDR4 RAM and a decent B550 motherboard. DDR5 is more expensive than DDR4, and just another thing to consider when shopping. While looking through the best-selling CPUs on Amazon right now, I realized I own three of the five top CPUs that they have. So I rigged up a test bench to play some games with all three CPUs to see if there's a noticeable difference. I used each of them for various tasks between web browsing, gaming, and just basic things us gamers might do daily. And I thought I'd turn on my camera and share the results with you. If this video is the type of thing you like to see, consider subscribing below because we are frequently making content just like this that's easy to understand and answer some of those questions you may have while building your own PC. Real quick, I want to talk about the test setup that I threw together to run these CPUs. Yes, it was built on the motherboard's cardboard box. It's the cheapest and easiest way to test your parts before building your PC. That's a pro tip. Write that down. This setup was built with standard parts that most people would choose when building a mid-tier gaming PC. For the motherboard, I used the ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming. It's using version 2806 BIOS revision, in case you wanted to know. For the CPU cooler, I went with the Deepcool AK500 Zero Dark. Deepcool claims this can handle 240 watts of heat dissipation. For the RAM, I used 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z RGB at 3200 megahertz. 3600 megahertz is what most people are going with these days, but here in the studio, I only have 3200, so you get what you got. The all-important graphics card is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3070. It's the middle of the road 30 series GPU, and I think it represents a large audience very well. If you look at Amazon's top selling GPUs right now, the top two slots are occupied by the RTX 3060. Beyond that, it's the RTX 3060 Ti, the RTX 4070 Ti, and the AMD RX 580. So four out of those five GPUs are mid-tier GPUs to begin with. 
and the RX 580 is actually a budget series GPU in today's market. Sorry to tell you for those running that card at home. Okay, let's talk about the CPUs that I tested today. And I'll start with the number one CPU on the list, which is the Ryzen 5 5600X. It's got six cores and 12 threads with a max boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. It's a 65 watt TDP CPU and it has 32 megabytes of L3 cache. Coming in at the number four slot is the Ryzen 7 5700X. This is almost identical to the 5600X. It boosts to a maximum of 4.6 gigahertz, has 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and it's a 65 watt TDP CPU. The only difference between these two is the 5700X has eight cores and 16 threads, while the 5600X only has six cores and 12 threads. Better for multitasking, if you ask me. And the last CPU I've got for testing today, which bumps back and forth from fifth to sixth place, is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This processor is eight cores and 16 threads with a max boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz. It has a higher 105 watt TDP, but also has a much higher 96 megabytes of L3 cache, which is what aids its gaming performance. Real quick, I wanna give you the prices of these CPUs because I forgot to write that in my script and I think it matters when looking at the gaming benchmarks and stuff a lot more than you would expect. The first one on the list is the 5600X, that's the number one slot, and it comes in at $153.60 USD. The Ryzen 7 5700X comes in at $192.99, while the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D comes in at $325.99. I got lucky and picked mine up for $299 on sale. Keep your eyes open. I just think the price matters a lot, especially once you see some of these results. Speaking of the gaming benchmarks, let's take a look at that now. For the game testing, I did three runs of each game, mostly on high settings with no ray tracing other than one title and no DLSS enabled either. The first game tested was Apex Legends. This game has been out for quite a long time now and it's fairly easy to run. I had everything set on their highest preset since all CPUs can push over 200 FPS in this title. That being said, the 5800X 3D did achieve a notable difference to the tune of 236.8 versus the 213.8 and the 212.7 for the 5700X and 5600X. Stepping up to 1440p evens things out at 188.9 with the 5600X matching its performance the 5700X only hit 168.5 at this resolution. It's always hard to test a battle royale since every match is different, even if you take the same path for each round. To show some consistency, the second game up was Forza Horizon 5. I used the built-in benchmark for this test to make it easier on me to maintain this consistency. High quality presets were used for this title and that does enable ray tracing set to medium by default. The 1080p results show the 5800X 3D strength again with 170.3 FPS average, while the 5700X and 5600X hit 153 and 151.1. 1440p results were almost the same across all three CPUs with about a three to four FPS difference between each. At this point, we seem to be GPU bottlenecked and this will be the case on most games at 1440p using this setup. Hogwarts Legacy is a recently released title I've been really into lately, so I thought I'd see if these CPUs made a difference in the game. The 5800X 3D was able to hit 153.4 FPS at 1080p, while the 5700X saw 154, with the 5600X trailing closely at 150.5. 1440p is once again GPU limited, with the two Ryzen 7 CPUs seeing 112.4 FPS, and the 5600X reached 119. But that's with invariance due to not having a built-in benchmark. I feel that Cyberpunk 2077 needed to be added to the testing, even though I already knew what the results would show. This was using another built-in benchmark and ran on high settings. As you can see, the 1080p results are similar between the Ryzen 7 CPUs, achieving 113 FPS average with the Ryzen 5 trailing at 108.3. 1440p was even more similar with all testing at about 75 FPS. Like I said, expected. Fortnite was the last game I threw into the mix. These settings were a little more complicated since there are so many options. I used DirectX 12 with 100% render scale, turned off Lumen and Nanite with the remaining settings on high, except TSR was set to medium. 
The 5800X 3D hit 195.2 at 1080p, with the 5700X at 187.1, and the 5600X at 179.2. 1440p was kind of all over the place with the 5800X 3D at 129.7, the 5700X was close behind at 126.2, but the 5600X was ahead of both at 138.7. Now we get down to the final verdict. Why are these top five CPUs the best sellers on Amazon right now? Well, I can tell you right away why the 7800X 3D and the i9-13900K are at the top of the list. Because they're simply the best performing CPUs you can buy. If top performance is what you crave and money is no object, then those two CPUs are your only choice. Now, the remaining three CPUs on the list are what the rest of buyers want. As far as the 5800X 3D is concerned, that's in the same situation as the previous two CPUs. It's for a limited audience. You really won't see the benefits of the 3D vCache unless you pair it with a high-end GPU and you're playing at 1080p resolution. So you basically have to create a CPU bottleneck situation for yourself. Using the 5800X 3D with something like an RTX 3060 or 3070 would be a waste. So I'd say save the money, buy one of the other two options, and put that money towards the next tier GPU. As you can see in the testing, the 5600X is perfectly fine at gaming, especially when paired with something like a 3070 or 3060. Or on the AMD side, the 6600 or 6700 XT. You'd be fine buying the 5600X over any of these other options pairing with these GPUs. It nets you the same performance for far less money. However, my recommendation today is the Ryzen 7 5700X. For $40 more, it gives you two more cores and four more threads over the 5600, and still provides solid gaming performance when paired with something like a 3060 or 6700 XT. This is, in my opinion, the best CPU for under $200. And if you pair it with a cheap B550 motherboard and some DDR4 RAM, you've got yourself a solid gaming platform for years to come. And if you want more recommendations on the best PC parts to buy for your next build, check out these videos next because I'm willing to bet they'll help you out as well. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.